We first found out about the site from a sport diver named Hamidu at Calypso Dive Center um, in 2008. So my colleague and I, Lucy Simon, we went there and looked at it. And of course we saw this big stone anchor and uh, there was quite a bit of pottery lying around on the surface, some of which belonged to the Iron Age, the Phoenician period. And in further research, we were able to find some parallels to what we saw down there, which put things into 10th, 9th, 8th century BC, uh, with origins maybe southern Palestine, Gaza area, or even in Egypt. The sport diving community is usually very much aware of uh, the presence of underwater cultural heritage. So when they discover a new site, they report it to maritime archaeologists that they know and they collaborate with. So when we got back here this summer, 2013, the, we went down on the site and saw that all the surface material was gone. There was only the anchor left. The first assessment of the site only pointed us towards the emergency of setting up an excavation underwater on the site itself. Will we fail or uh, will this be a success? Our team also included the amateurs of archaeology who have advanced uh, diving experience. Well, I'm Monica Jabaley, and actually I'm just a volunteer. My job was to do what everybody else was doing. We all really did the same thing, and that was to excavate the different soundings just to see what kind of material is there. I was captain بسوقت البوت كنت ليه عن البوت نزلهم بالسايت المزبوط بدل ما يحطوا بوينت عليه كرمال العالم والسيد ما ينزلوا على اللوكيشن تاعيتهم كنت عم بنزل ساعدهم تحت المي عم شيل معهم بوتري عم بحفظ معهم By collaborating with divers, we encourage them to uh, engage with submerged archaeological sites in a responsible and non-intrusive manner. The geomorphology of the site is made of a coral bedrock with pockets of sand. And in these sand pits, we found a lot of pottery. Therefore, our methodology was to set datum points. These would uh, determine the extension of the site. And then we measured every datum point uh, to the remaining datum points. And therefore, we've got like a web of reference points that are tied in together. Once we did that, we started excavating, and by excavating, it is simple uh, fanning with the hand, with the movement of the hand. Fanning the soil and the sand and rocks as well, you know, out of the trenches, and then just to go down as deep as possible. And then look for pottery or any other or small artifacts that might be of interest. We dug about 12 soundings. We followed the stratigraphy of the site layer by layer. Of course, the stratigraphy of the site was a mystery to us because we had not excavated before. So we did a um, test pit. And uh, this test pit, which, which was sounding number eight, where Ralph was concentrating his work on, uh, showed us uh, so far that we've got around five layers. Some of the sherds that we found needed to be chiseled off with a hammer and a, and a chisel because they were concreted to the rocks uh, next to it. Once the measurements are done underwater, we take the picture and then after we make sure that the measurements in the picture are taken, we, re we remove the shirt, place it in a plastic bag and put the plastic bag, store the plastic bag away a bit from the sand pit that we're excavating. What we also did was drawing sketches on our slates underwater and placing the approximative uh, location of each artifact that we were finding on the on the sketch. Um, once this is done, we did a swim over to establish a photo mosaic on the site. Because we had found the Iron Age uh, 
sure, we thought this might have been an indication of seafaring during the Iron Age. But then we started digging into the site and we found quite a bit of pottery. But it wasn't what we were expecting. We were finding Roman pottery on top, some Byzantine pottery. Uh, and then when, as we got down into the site deeper, we started to find some more Iron Age pottery, but not a lot, just a handful of pieces. There's more Byzantine ceramics than anything else. We might think that this is probably popular anchorage spot in antiquity since it's protected by the Ras Beirut and the waters are relatively calm so ships would anchor at a distance on the site itself or on the area itself and then small boats would take the cargo from large ships towards the coast. So now we have to figure out what we've got. Is it a shipwreck? Is it two shipwrecks? Is it an anchorage point? Um, is it a dump? We simply don't know. The plan is we have this large anchor that weighs about 200 kilos and we're trying to raise it because we've been told if we leave it on site someone's going to steal it. So apparently people have been talking about it so we have to rescue it. And the idea is to float it using these gallon cans that are used for diesel fuel, tie it to the anchor, fill them with air, raise it up and bring it here into AUV Beach, where we'll take it out of the water, put it on a dolly, and bring it into campus, where it will be stored for safety. We tied it to the boat, and then the boat towed it towards the entrance of AUV Beach. Floating it's not the problem, the problem is getting it up out of the water because once it hits the surface it suddenly becomes very heavy. It's underwater, everything is one-sixth of its normal weight. For the safety of the artifact, we removed the anchor and we're going to store it in Fisk Hole at the UB. <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye. Um, what we've got so far is a lot of material and uh, there is a lot of uh, potential for the future. They say that every month you spend in the field excavating, you have to spend a year in the library. So we've spent a month on the water and now we have to spend a year in a library. Among the artifacts that we excavated uh, in the Einle Reise project, uh, there were some metal objects. These were quite corroded and needed some further analysis. So we took them to the laboratory facilities at the General Directorate of Antiquities where the conservator uh, checked their state and recommended that they would be uh, first x-rayed before proceeding to the treatment and their conservation. They will have to be uh, uh, slowly desalinated and then cleaned. And it's, uh, it's going to take uh, a while. It's a fairly long process. We'll take care of, uh, of the objects now, put them in storage, change mm -hmm. the water and put them in an adequate uh, environment All until right. we decide uh, further what to do. By raising the awareness of the underwater cultural heritage, uh, divers would actually fight alongside underwater archaeologists in order to protect and preserve the artifacts and the underwater cultural heritage from potential looting and commercial exploitation. You know, I mean, I think it's an exciting experience and I think that maybe that would make sport divers, recreation divers, more cognizant of the fact that we do have a lot of ar archaeological finds, which they probably know from past dives. Maybe it'll make them more aware that they should actually um, leave 
whatever they find at the bottom of the sea and not disturb it and leave it so that archaeologists, marine archaeologists, can come and actually do a survey and find out what the coast of Lebanon has. So the people of Lebanon are really not thinking about it. They are thinking about how they can use it in business, how they can get out of it. We have a lot of knowledge that when we find something, we have to tell them because there is someone who will be involved in it. Not that someone will see them. So we don't want to leave them in a place so we can get to the end of the day. It was a learning experience for me, which I really enjoyed. I would do it again. We have something that is not available in the world. We have a long time in the past. We have to find it under the water. We have to find it from it. We have to change the world with the water. They find it with us under the water. We have to find it from the water. We can do it from the side of business. This is the first thing. We can get more water. لأنه عندنا شيء نشوفه تحت المي من ناحية تانية من ناحية ستاديز عم يعملوها بالجامعات بيجي عالم من برا بروفيسورية دكاترة يستكشفوا هالشي معنا لبنان. We believe that through reaching out and working with different communities whether these are uh, academics, students, divers and even the wider public we can contribute to a better knowledge, appreciation and preservation of the underwater cultural heritage of Lebanon. <laughs>